from Valaticus. Today we're trying out the Citation 2 S550. It's by Carnado. It's a new aircraft to me. Um, it's one that I have been experimenting quite a bit with and really like. I'm going to do a short flight from Belfast uh, in Northern Ireland over to Dundee, uh, which is in Scotland. Um, and uh, the Dundee Airport will be by Orbix. Um, Belfast is just stock footage in X-Plane 11. So let's um, have a look at our weather for Belfast and Dundee. So I'm using ForeFlight, which is a GA app, um, which um, integrates with X-Plane, so it's rather good. If you're doing instrument rating or anything like that, it's really, really educational. Um, got the Belfast weather up at the moment and uh, currently looking at 040 at 13 knots, 10 kilometres or more broken, 4700 and 1022 is the pressure. Dundee, uh, it's uh, 1205 few at 1000 scattered, 2600 QNH1023. So um, four flight is a real GA app. It's aimed at real pilots, um, and it's unfortunately only available on iOS. So if you are Android users, um, then I'm afraid it's not available at this time. Um, but um, if you do have um, iOS, then it's uh, it's a pretty good tool to have. Um, it's not free. Uh, there is a trial, 30-day trial, but it's about £100, $100 for the basic license, and that's for one year. And that covers one specific region. Uh, so in this case, we're actually going to cover Europe. Uh, there's also a subscription for North America, or specifically the USA, and a separate one for Canada, if that's where you're based, or at least if that's where you fly from. Um, it's, um, it's great for whether it feeds uh, the METARs and TAFs from uh, airports that report. Um, it al also has a number of uh, levels um, on the map. Um, so you can see at the moment we're looking at the topographic view of Northern Ireland and Scotland and Northern England. Um, this also enables us to plan routes. So that's what we're going to do now. So a number of ways of planning routes, it's not meant to be a tutorial for four flight, but we're just going to put in um, our starting point, and I can't remember what it is, so uh, EJAC. So one way we can do it is either to type in into here, EJAC, or in fact we can actually click on the map, which probably would be easier, and then just add that to the route, and that adds EJAC to the route. Um, EGPN, well let's type that in, EGPN, that's the code for Dundee, and that will draw a straight line and it gives us um, a distance, and that's 147 nautical, um, a straight line distance. Now obviously it's very rare in aviation to get to fly straight lines, so we can, what we can do is we can have a look at uh, our, our, our uh, IFR map and we can plan according to that. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, Europe IFR probably put the low level map in um, and that looks like it's not available to us here um, that's because of the subscription I've got on here which I think it must be North America um, so um, that's not a problem actually because we can actually click on the routes um, and what that will do is come up with uh, some planned routes between those two locations it gives you the choices now and you can actually see this little map will actually show you the different routes and the distances so uh, this particular one um, more or less straight lines you can see um, but it routes us via um, some of the waypoints on route um, also this gives flight level 80 so this will be a low level IFR route um, in fact I think most of these are actually um, so we're going to go for that one you can just select the route and it will automatically draw it on the chart and add the waypoints for us which is great okay so um, that's that planned um, I need to just go back and get the weather for Belfast particularly the pressure which is 1022 um, now aircraft as I say citation 2 s550 Carnado 
Uh, it's a really nicely detailed aircraft and again this is not meant to be a review of the aircraft but um, it's one that I really love flying. It's a jet obviously um, but unlike a lot of the jets, the airliners and some of the really high performance business jets, um, this is quick but it's not that quick. Um, it's quite um, a, quite a good platform to transition to if you're used to flying um, twin prop or single performance uh, aircraft. Um, also, as you can see, if you just zoom in a bit, you can see the windows um, on the in the cockpit in particular. See how large they are. If you just hop in there, you can actually see. You've got a huge amount of visibility. Look at that. Almost see completely above. And if you move to the window, you can actually see almost totally below. So this is actually not a bad aircraft for VFR flying. Um, not that we're going to do that today, but it's always nice to have that option. Um, particularly if you, you know, a day like today, the visibility is pretty good. Uh, it's not too bad, and uh, you could cancel IFR and you could continue flight VFR, or at least fly the visual approach and not be forced into doing an instrument approach. Let's um, get into the cockpit and go through the checklists. Now, um, that brings me to another point on for flight. Um, you can actually. Um, drag in PDFs or images or other media into the document section and what I have done is created a set of checks for the citation to um, and I just drag those into the document section and so they're always on hand um, which is really convenient um, so I'm going to run through those now now all of the top ones the entering cockpit preparation when you start up the simulator are um, are things that you have to check but actually uh, well, the simulator will always start with those uh, in the correct position uh, so if you really want to accelerate this you can just start with the cockpit preparation the other thing to mention is that I'm using the Elgato Stream Deck uh, which is a programmable uh, keyboard add-on um, and this allows you to customize various keys on the device for any application that you're using, which is really convenient. But one thing it does that's unique um, is that each of the keys is a little screen and you can configure that screen to appear exactly how you wish, which is fabulous news really, because it means you can completely customize the look of that to match the aircraft you're flying, for example. I'm going to do another tutorial on that on a separate occasion, but just to let you know that's what I'm using. Um, and I've set the, the keys up for this particular aircraft in here as well. So when I go through the checklist, I'll be using the Stream Deck to automate some of the settings, some of the uh, controls. Um, so I have created a number of pages on the Stream Deck to, to reflect different stages of flight. Uh, the, the initial one is the pre-start, um, so let's go through the checklist now. So anti-ice switches, off, battery on, so that's going to be a key on the stream deck. Now as soon as I do that I like to switch on the avionics and the AC and then there's an initial setup uh, which I've programmed into this. Um, which is kind of cheating a little bit, but it um, it just switch, it makes some various changes that I want on every flight. So I'm going to hit that now. First thing you'll notice is the yoke disappears, various instruments appear. I'm just setting the climb VSI on the autopilot. It changes the way wind is displayed on the navigation display. Um, so now it's changed to vectors and it's also changed the mode to GPS mode because that would be on uh, nav one. Okay, so for most of the flights we'd want GPS mode. Um, I think that's it, but it, um, it sets up a number of things when each flight just makes it very convenient. Um, so the next item in the checklist is ATIS and clearance. Well, clearance we're not going to simulate here, but the ATIS um, check the weather, and I've forgotten that again. So the pressure at Belfast 1022. Okay, so while we're on this screen, we can actually go back. Uh, up into the altimeter and set that. Now it defaults to inches of mercury, but if you click on the button, you get um, hectopascals. Um, we can put 1022 in there, and it's just above sea level. And there it is, just 
uh, 16 feet where we are on the airport. Uh, back to the checks. Um, so battery is on, we can check the emergency battery and back to normal, <clears throat> cockpit lighting. So even in good daylight, it's, um, it's important to set the lighting up. Um, more or less turn all of these on till I see a movement. Okay, that's great. Um, GPU connected. Okay, so that's simulated via a menu and it's currently indicates that it's connected. If we go to the outside view, you can see the car actually plugged into our left hand side and rear fuselage. Okay, so the next check will be our um, rotary test check, which is this. And this cycles through a number of different emergency checks. Um, I don't normally bother with it, but two I do check is the enunciator check, make sure all the lights are on, and then switch the other way and the fire warning lights. Um, if we were to be purists, we'd go through every single one of these. Um, and again, that would be subject to another check. Um, so down here, the standby gyro is on, engine instruments, usual flags. Uh, next stage will be to set the FMS up and I have a button to switch that on. Uh, so EGAC is our ICAO code for Belfast and EGPN I think is Dundee. I'll just check that, EGPN correct. Uh, some of these ICAO codes are fairly intuitive and some are complete nonsense. Um, so the next part of it will be the route, so we need the map view. So first waypoint is Maggie, M-A-G-E-E. -E. And next page, and then Blacker, B-L-A-C-A. -A. And then P600, and this is an airway, it's a very short, part of the airway and it goes on the left hand side connects to Perth PTH and while we're entering these I'm also checking to make sure it, um, it's kind of um, parsing them it's actually checking to make sure these make sense so the P600 airway if we put in a waypoint that doesn't exist on there uh, perhaps we could try that BCN Brecon uh, says invalid entry so it is kind of checking for you uh, put that back to Perth. Clear. Oh, God almighty. Yeah, one thing you have to work, um, consider with these um, things like the flight management computer is that they were developed. Um, oh, that's, that is in there. What am I doing? They were developed at a time where um, the usability on these sort of things was developed by engineers and technicians and without very much regard for humans using it. Um, so it's a source of much frustration and um, pilots just work around it but it is frustrating. Right the next thing I like to do is to enter the vertical climb profile. Um, so on the climb page we've got a transition altitude which defaults to 18,000 which is the standard in North America. Uh, in Europe uh, it's typically 6,000 and that's what we're going to enter here. We should actually get that from the departure chart. It would always be written on the departure chart. Um, cruise, well it's a shortish flight. I'm going to put 200 for our flight level. So the, just to, um, I've skipped over it. The transition altitude is the, the height at which we transition from um, using feet. Um, so 6,000 feet uh, or flight levels. And they are kind of the same thing. The difference being that the, um, the, before the transition altitude, you're actually uh, looking at height either above the airfield or above the sea level pressure for that region. Um, but when you get above that level, then all aircraft fly on the same pressure setting. So, so your actual height will vary depending on where you are. But what's important is if you've got two aircraft uh, flying at 10,000 feet on standard pressure, it means that they're actually at the same height in that particular region and that's of much more importance. As we get closer to the ground obviously we need more accurate measurements above ground level. Uh, so 200 is cruise level, we can stick that into cruise. Sometimes it will protest saying can't achieve that. 
uh, in which case you might have to go for a lower level uh, it took that that's no problem and on the way down transition flight level flight level 180 again North American standard so we're going to put 6000 in there um, actually flight level 60 that's where we transition as I say to local pressure and that is us done uh, what I like to do is just a quick final check um, sanity check really if you look at the routes mostly northeast um, and that's what we're expecting to see so 044 073 I'm looking at the headings here and what it's done is actually put in some waypoints that we haven't entered these are the intermediate waypoints for example between Blaka and um, Perth uh, on the P600 airway are a number of waypoints on the airway and so that's what it's you see it's quite a few actually there it's added in so I'm just simply checking that our heading is correct and also the distance so we don't get something that's a thousand mile leg or whatever and that's good and then on the progress page um, this is quite a useful one to use in flight We've got the top of descent after 78 miles it's 153 to Dundee um, it gives us our times as well in uh, Zulu time uh, so um, that's um, a really useful page to have in flight but it also gives us our distance 153 kind of corresponds to four flights planned it's a mile out but we'll, um, we'll allow that um, and that's it really for the CDU switch back to the checklist now um, and then the next thing is to set the nav and com up well I'm not going to um, I, I'm not going to use um, any of the um, nav navigation uh, or com instruments apart from one thing which is the uh, we're probably going to fly the ILS uh, into Dundee the weather's actually looking okay but we'll uh, we, the standard we'll plan for an instrument approach now on the charts page on four flight uh, this is a brilliant feature I, I'm so please they've added this but before what you'd have to do is you'd have to reference all the charts you want to use for your departure airport same for your destination and organize them now all you have to do is come up with the uh, charts from the last flight I did all I have to do is hit the import button and it will automatically bring up the last flights or um, that you've done and this one's come from the maps EGAC to EGPN the one I've just entered click on it and that's it the top part of it is your airport your departure there's no departure at Belfast approach into Belfast if you were to come back in gives you a choice there any miscellaneous information and then for EGPN Dundee our approach airport plan and any miscellaneous pages there as well so what we can do on this for example is stick the airport plan on there um, and have that while we're taxiing out and probably the next thing will be our approach now we haven't actually planned an approach and what I mean by that is um, our instrument approach to get us onto the runway now I know the wind was uh, easterly I think just check that um, so Dundee winds uh, it's changed a bit it's 110 so it's becoming towards the east which is great so we need to know that to plan the approach um, so Runway choice is really uh, just one runway at Dundee 0927. Um, typically, we'll go for the ILS uh, if that's available to us. Um, so, just having a look down here, we've got the ILS 09 and select that. Um, so, that'll bring that up on there. Um, now, the other thing we can do with this once we've selected something is we can beam this over to the map <laughs> and it appears over the map. I'll just show you that. It's absolutely fantastic. So share map and look at that look at that that's just appeared over the map I tell you I've gone through an instrument rating I've gone through an instrument rating all the nightmare we're going through paperwork and having to manage that in the cockpit and then a separate one for the chart and, you know using your brain then to try to correlate the two this is just so much better it's just incredible and you can zoom in we can do all kinds of things with this um, we can uh, make it semi-transparent so you can see details behind uh, I've got the plate colours inverted but we can switch to standard colours which is a sort of white background I prefer the black personally um, we can hide it um, if we want to and bring it open again if we want or full screen so that's also still on our chart but because it's there we can now switch to something like the uh, map for you and you see a little aircraft there in blue uh, we go um, back to the navigation view on the on the chart and it's still there the uh, instrument approach is still there 
So with all that wittering, um, what I want to do is to um, is to focus on the, on the stage on the checklist we're at, which is the nav and com. And what I'm most interested in this is the navigation instruments that we need to use for this approach. That will be the ILS localizer frequency, which is 108.1 IDDE for Dundee, and the Delta November Delta, the DND, which is an NDB, and that's used as part of our approach. You can see where that is on here. Um, actually, is part when we start the descent. That's kind of a, a checkpoint. Um, actually, it's interesting. There isn't a height check for passing over Dundee as, as um, we're getting lower, but it will be a distance of 2.6 miles, so we can check that to make sure we are absolutely on that approach. So let's put the frequencies in now. 108.1 is nav. This is another thing that I've used Stream Deck for because actually setting navigation frequencies and communication, ADF frequencies, which is your um, instrument that reads the NDB, that's a nightmare actually, um, depending on the cockpit you're flying. Um, but on these aircraft and GA, it's a bit of a nightmare because you have to twiddle knobs and things like that. It's very difficult to do with the mouse. So I've kind of cheated. What I've done is I've created a nav and com page which has got a numeric keypad on um, and I'll, I'll put a picture over the video here so you can see um, it's got com nav adf transponder even and, and also has some um, macros for vfr and emergency so things that the air, actual aircraft may not have but really convenient to be able to set the transponder to vfr for example after you've um, come off the run runway after landing so we're going to set on 108.1 and let's do that now um, 108.1 and then switch that over to that's going to be nav1 and I'm just going to show that is in there unfortunately it's of course already in there so it's, it's a bit of a duff example let me show you with the uh, ADF uh, to prove that this actually works so 108.1 that's the ILS for Dundee and it was the last place I flew from the NDB is 394, 394, and I'm going to put them on ADF2, and there is a reason for that. And if you see, uh, that appears on the standby on ADF2. And if I hit the, uh, the little toggle here, that will actually make that active. So I want that active, I want the ILS for 09 active as well. Okay, and that's our NAVCOM setup. Okay, next thing airspeed bug so um, what I typically do with this is just set that uh, it doesn't go below about 84 knots and that's generally okay so for this I'd be looking at um, putting the speed for us our rotation um, and 84 85 there, there, there are uh, charts for working that out which I've, I've got on here as well but um, I'm not going to go through as I say it's not a tutorial on flying the citation um, so I'm going to set that at 84. This thing, needless to say, this gets off the ground quickly. It's quite, it's quite powerful. It's not that heavy. It doesn't take a lot to get this in the air. Um, and the other thing I really like about it is it gets in and out of tiny airfields. I mean, my God, I'd, I'd tell you what, if I was going to, if I had the money for one of these, they're at half a million bucks. Um, uh, it's not that, it's how much it costs to run the damn thing because you'd end up with hangers and you'd end up with all kinds of expensive maintenance. So, I mean, that's always the consideration. But if I had that kind of money spare, I would be buying one. I would have one of these because they're absolutely fantastic. And you're not struggling thinking, oh, I, you know, I'm going to fly an extra 100 miles because I can't get into the airfield. There's always nowhere you can't get in. I've tried it. I've tried it. Uh, there's some really small airfields. Like, 2100 2200 feet and it gets in there easily i mean partly thanks to the fact it's got reverse thrust and that always helps um but as i say i would certainly if i was half a million quid um more wealthy i would definitely consider buying one sorry if i had half a million quid disposable that's a very important difference because uh, if i had half a million pounds to um it would have to be to spare on planes because i could think of a million and one other things to spend that money on Okay, enough witching. Next thing on the checklist is the fuel. Now, that is, this is quite um, an old school cockpit, and that's partly what I like about it as well. So, here's our fuel uh, display. Just, um, it's about uh, 1300 um, pounds, this is per side. 
Um, and that is hours and hours of fuel, actually. Um, the minimum I try to go with is about 500 a side, and certainly for this flight, I'd be happy with that. It's on 1300, and that's absolutely fine, so sufficient fuel. Um, now we've made sure we're not fueling up, the next thing to do would be, it's not on the checklist at this point, but I like to switch on the passenger safety light and just go back. This is a, a, a safe position. This is sitting in the rear and looking towards the cockpit. And you can see, uh, if I zoom in here, uh, you see up here the seatbelt sign is on now. So back to the cockpit. Um, Pre-flight complete. Passenger briefing. Well, we don't have any passengers today, but we'd be given the briefing at this point. Brakes set. Uh, so here's our brake lever. This is very much a reminder of um, Cessna, uh, uh, which is the manufacturer of the Citation. Um, same company that makes the little 150, 152 that so you might learn to do your first flight on in, in a flying school. <laughs> Some of it is really quite archaic, I mean, including this little handle. This It's basically a cable with a knob on, um, which is your brakes. Uh, typically what you have to do is pull that and then you press the top of the brakes and then you release this handle and it kind of locks it. And then you just tab the top of the brakes to release. I've actually got this on the joystick um, as a way of setting and unsetting it. Um, and uh, so let's continue with this. So part brake is set. Uh, fuel boost pumps are normal. Um, engine sync. Let's go into this view here. So engine sync's down here. That's already set off, and that'll be set when we start um, when we're in flight. Um, windshield blue valves are here and there. Will off. Um, elevator trim, um, that's um, something I've set a joystick button on and I'm sure a lot of you guys do the same thing. Um, next thing will be rotating beacon, so I'm just going to zoom in, I do have buttons um, for this um, on the stream deck, I'll uh, do it the old school way here, so beacon on and anti-collision lights on as well, uh, anti-collision lights over here, and now we've got the um, we've got those beacons, you see the beacon on the tail flashing and the anti-collision lights flashing there. So uh, we do have the door open still, so let's close that, I've got a button for that. Uh, you can also do that manually if you like. Now, um, before we start getting too excited about um, the flight, we need to work out, um, we need to work out um, which end of the runway we're going for. Now normally we'd be listening to the ATIS, we'll get all that detail from ATIS and um, be listening to other aircraft requesting it. Um, so Belfast City 04013, so that's clearly going to be 04. So we're going to um, go tail towards the north and then travel down to 04. We'll use full length as well, even though we don't need to. Um, okay, let's go back to the checks. Um, so the external doors are closed. So the next thing here, and this is something I forget all the time, switch the master avionics off because we're about to start the engines. Um, if you don't do that, and there was a power spike that could take out thousands of dollars worth of nav equipment, you don't really want to do that because a lot of people find this don't own the aircraft and they don't want to get into trouble. Next thing on the checklist is the start procedure now. So ignitions are both on, and uh, these are down here. Um, and then the start light, these are these buttons here. So what we're going to do typically, because the GPU is on the left hand side we'll start the right engine on the gpu so that's giving us the power um, and as soon as the right engine is started and we're happy with that we'll get the crew to disconnect it and then we start the left and that simply means the crew are not having to disconnect our gpu with the engines running uh, on that side okay just just uh, considers their safety a little bit so back to the cockpit start right buttons and you see it illuminate looking for the turbine up to 10 we then lift the latch and bring that throttle up and that will start the flow of fuel you can hear it now if we go to the outside view you hear that engine starting up we should really be looking at the instruments for this the um, temperature rises and falls and we're looking to make sure that happens n1 now spooling up and what we can do at this point is switch our voltmeter over to the right engine and we can switch the right generator on and we see we've got 28 volts which is what we want 
at this point we're happy with that stable we can say to the ground crew okay thanks so much disconnect ground power and it's off and go out to the external view you can see it's gone okay next thing same thing for the left hand side so start latch fuel and you'll see the stopping position for the throttle slightly uh, f further forward um, once the fuel starts so just um, come in a little bit you can see now we've got light up we're watching this very carefully because what we don't want to do is to do is go zoom up into the red it should level off just over 600 which it is and it's starting to fall as it falls the n1 fan is starting to rise and it rises pretty quickly and that indicates a good start and so what we're looking for here is the engine stabilized turbine stabilized n1 stabilized we can then switch the generator left on and then put the volt selector this is just the voltmeter selector this doesn't do anything other than changes what our voltmeter shows just saves having three instruments see we've got dc amps on the left and right generator this is the volt meter for the battery which is 24 volts and that's exactly where it should be okay happy with that everything is good from the engine start point we can send the ground crew away if we wanted now although i did forget one thing which is actually we're probably going to need to push back from here so i'm just going to request our pushback <coughs> and that was all right actually and we will go there this is where you have to really know where you're going ground to cockpit plan acknowledge call me through the menu when you're ready avionics can come on now and we ground are ready. to cockpit toe is driving up i'm so pleased to hear that okay let's continue the rest of the checks so we've got our power switches on dc and amps voltage check anti-icing not going to check it's not an issue today but should really check it passenger advisory light is on anti-skid light on there's lots of weird things about this aircraft Inverters are, um, inverters is something we test, it's to do with the AC and we're failing the left and right making sure we get a warning light and that goes away when we switch back to normal, there's our tow truck. Um, gyro pressure, that's over on the right hand side, that's looking good. Uh, battery temperature as well, actually apparently that's a really big thing with these aircraft. Air conditioning fan, oh my god yeah, definitely want that on. Pressurisation, that's the other thing I haven't really mentioned. So it's just a little dial here. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, um, ready to connect. So we just set it to set the cabin pressure about 3,000 feet. And if I just zoom in, you'll see that corresponds to about 20,000, maybe 3,500. Winching strap and adapter in position. Release parking brake when ready to start pushback. Okay, releasing the brake. There it is. So it's, it's strapped to the front nose well, pulls us in. Well, you probably know actually, because this is just uh, a better pushback, which is rather good, works quite well, I like it. Normally you wouldn't have had the engines roaring away at this point, but that was my oversight. Um, what else have we got here? Electric trim we set, that's good. Starting pushback. And he didn't say, and you can start engines because we've already started, but that's fine. ATIS and clearance, next thing on the checklist, we are done. Avionics, we've set up all the frequencies we need. If there was a departure frequency, uh, sorry, if there was a departure plan that we're flying a uh, SID, standard instrument departure, we'd have that all set up at this point. Autopilot, that's the other thing, just check. Um, 2000 is the def was the last level, so I'm gonna set that to three, actually. Uh, part of our clearance would probably give us about 3000. So just go through the modes. We're gonna have heading mode on when we take off. We're gonna sync that to the runway heading. We have altitude mode and we've got altitude select and this is one of those quirks with this autopilot it's really really weird and vertical speed mode will be our vertical mode when we're in the climb so that can go off uh, the other thing that isn't um, on the checklist um, well it is actually it's uh, flight instruments I wanted to tell you something that I do it's, my god this is such a makes such a big difference I have uh, I've got a joystick because you'd be crazy not to have one of those. I've also got a throttle quadrant by Cytec. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Brake on. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Got a throttle quadrant by Cytec. Really, really good and worth having. The other thing I've got is rudder pedal 
uh, a set of rudder pedals. Um, Thrustmaster ones, plastic, they're fine. Uh, do make quite a bit of difference. Um, but um, one thing about them is I like to go through a joystick calibration on each flight because they can be quite twitchy and I'd like to show you that actually. I'm just going to move them here. Not too bad, but I'm hardly moving them and there's quite a lot of movement there. Um, so what I normally do at this point is go in to joystick, select the rudder, it appears as T rudder, and click calibrate, and then, well, you don't need me to explain this, but there's um, not only is there the yaw axis, there's also the left and right toe brake leave those sent it's very very quick oh my god this makes so much difference because otherwise you start taxing, taxing out it's really twitchy now I, I won't bother doing anything else that's fine but you can actually you can actually just just run it through you see it's lovely and smooth I should have probably shown you before and after but everything is now smooth and calibrated and I do that on every flight so is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed hand signal on the left We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, so another thing that's a bit unusual. We don't have a taxi light, but we've got a recognition light here. If I just go to the front, you can kind of see they're on the edge of the wings. You see it more at night than uh, in the daytime, but um, they give you a little bit of illumination, so it's quite um, uh, it's quite important to have it because there isn't a taxi light as such. Uh, sometimes you might might need to use the uh, landing light for um, navigating partly where that those taxi lights are over and are actually hanging over the taxi where they don't illuminate anything bye 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 thank you right he's going he's going oh, i do like the better better pushbacks uh, actually awesome so here we get our taxi clearance we hopefully are pointing in the right direction back to the charts and you can see we're on alpha pointing southwest so we've got the clearance let's go now, the other thing you'll notice if you've not flown this aircraft is you need quite a bit of power to get it going. It's not a, um, it's it's uh, quite a bit more than you might be used to. I mean, it's more synonymous with um, operating the controls on a little Cessna than a business jet or an airliner. Which, the good news is that it, it, it's quite easy to control. So let's go back to the checks while we're doing that. A fairly easy taxi route, this. Um, taxi lights on already. Brake check. Well, I'll just dab the brakes both sides. Steering. Normally use natural turns to make sure steering's okay. Uh, but you can also sort of wobble the nose wheel around the center line to make sure it's working okay. Uh, next thing is thrust reversers. Now, what we're doing here, we're not just checking the reversers work. What we're actually doing is checking the uh, emergency thrust reverse release mechanism works so amazingly you can stick reverse thrust in flight on this aircraft and obviously that's fine if that's what you want to do is you're working for NASA and you're doing some weird thing with it but you do not want that happening when you're on the approach or takeoff for that matter so to guard that there's a safety mechanism and it's these switches here Okay, so what we're going to do is just going to make sure we're away from the aircraft. Just do this quite this slight right wiggle, and then what I'm going to do is set reverse thrust, and I'm then going to test it disengages correctly. Here we are, idle, reverse thrust, and just switch off both sides. As soon as you do that, the throttle will activate. So turn that light off. Make sure this is very important. Turn them back on because you're landing on a 20 hundred. 2100 foot strip and you're relying on them and you've dis disengaged and that might be a good day okay so so back to normal taxiing then thrust reverses check now anti-ice before takeoff um, don't need anything flight controls check speed brakes as well we've got a little enunciator there we could see the speed brakes it's uh they are just on the wing you can just see just going a bit closer you can see there quite diddy actually um, and then reverses release and to make sure the spoilers release rather make sure they retract uh, next thing very important flaps um, not so much for this one we easily take off that flaps down. I'm going to put one stage on and you can barely see it but that uh, flap control is also an indicator there 
It can also take off with two stages of flap for a shorter runways and gives you a little bit of an advantage. Trims, well we have checked and set them but we are just checking them to make sure they're still set correctly. Just approaching the hold short line at this point. Um, so this is a good point to check autopilot as well and that's all set. Um, we've not disengaged that obviously next time we engage that will actually be flying so we want to make sure that's going to work. Takeoff data, well this is our speeds uh, say 84 not seems to work for a lot of it. Crew briefing, we'll just brief the departure and we can do that now actually. Uh, let's just click on where we are. So the first point Maggie, so we're going to take off and more or less fly runway heading and then link age and it will then take us to Maggie so it's a very slight right turn that's all we need to know really plus our initial height I'm assuming 3,000 feet and that's set on the autopilot um, next thing is uh, a pito static so this is uh, our takeoff checks as we're into the runway so pito static landing lights also come on these are controlled down here this bank of switches here um, strobe lights are on uh, transponder I haven't set a code sometimes you get codes after you've taken off because they're issued by radar um, we'll assume that in this case I'm going to leave it on 1200 but what I will do is switch it to altitude mode so it can actually see our altitude um, pressure source this is control here um, that goes into the normal position enunciator uh, panel should be clear which it is heading sync when we're on the run uh, runway I'm going to sync it to that and I've actually set a button on the joystick we have our clearance just a quick check uh, nothing arriving on zero four and hopefully we check on the right there's nothing on the runway coming in on the opposite end so we're good to go approaching runway zero four entered runway zero four 1798 meters remaining so that an enunciator, that's from ForeFlight, um, which you heard there, not through this aircraft. Yeah, you do get that with the uh, modern Airbuses through their own autopilots, but that's from ForeFlight. Now I normally take it on the roll, but as I'm just kind of talking through, we'll actually come to a hold here. And just line that up very very easy aircraft to fly right so um, sync that's one way headings in there now just make sure autopilot modes are still set which they are and we can get rid of that um, um, we are good to go uh, the other thing I normally switch to flight mode at this point on the stream deck so all of the things after takeoff like your damper um, and speed sync all the sort of things I want to have in flight are now ready to hand just makes it a bit easier it makes the experience a little bit easier even though it's kind of cheating now the other thing to point out actually quite important um, is I'm going to be monitoring the temperature on the engine here and I'm going to try to keep the temperature outside of the yellow area even for takeoff if you needed extra power so one of the engines failed and you cannot stop um, which is going to be unusual in this aircraft you normally have sufficient space and certainly will today um, then you'll probably want to max out the other engine but uh, the idea of this is keep it in the green and the engine should last about the length of time they, sh they were expected to but we're good to go now we also get a warning uh, an unsealed to come on I don't really understand why could be a bug I don't know airspeed alive and rotate gear up speed building flaps up and that's that's not with the autopilot on that's nicely trimmed now I'm going to switch the autopilot on just bring the power back a little bit and we can get rid of that after takeoff checks just going to do it from memory for the moment your damper is on turn the um, anti-skid off now um, we can also switch our engine sync on and then finally we'll switch to nav mode so autopilot oops 
Um, we can switch to nav mode now and make sure we're on GPS and slight right turn towards Maggie. Speed sync and and I've now selected IAS mode. That's climbing, holding the speed. And so there's a thousand foot to go warning. And we're level for 3000 initially, normally past two departure. And there we are on the map. Who just let that level off? And just watch the speed. I mean, as I say, it's, it's not particularly fast aircraft, but things do happen quickly if you're not used to them. Um, so let's make up a squawk code. I'm just looking at random numbers 4273. It's because it's 427 pm and 3 was the next number I saw. So I have a screen on here um, on the stream deck for that. I'm going to just show you on here. So it's 1200 4273. Nothing's changing here because that's actually in. Let's put it onto the right page and now for right there. Let's put it into the scratch pad of the CDU. Um, and I have a button to put that into the transponder. There it is. And we're good. How are we doing on speed? We're okay. It's a bit fast. Bloody, bloody, bloody. We've got, we've got identified on radar. Climb to flight level 120. Okay. So we're up to flight level 120. Set that up light level change and add some power and here we go so change to IAS mode so it's climbing and holding that speed uh, select 120 which is what we want there we're just about to enter clouds so a quick glance over there to the temperature gauge and we're still positive so no need for anti-ice Uh, keep an eye on that temperature as it drops. Obviously, we're actually busting through the top of it, so it's not going to be any icing problem on our way up. And I'm just going to increase the speed a bit up to 250. So I did have to set a key for this, but you've got the yaw damper on as well, which is something that goes on just after takeoff. And then we can have a quick look at the um, after takeoff checks, so anti skids off, your damper, yeah, flaps up, yeah, ignition's off. Um, that is these two here. Um, engine sync is on pressurization. Well, just checking it's pressurizing. You can see cabin and um, external uh, cabin pressure, external um, altitude have a differential, which is what we're looking for there. Um, also, we're just past the transition altitude now, so I'm going to have a button for this as well. You we see the pressure set to 1013, which is standard. So th this is a fairly short flight. Things do happen rather quickly. Um, this is the point we're starting to relax a little bit because we've haven't had any Im imminent emergencies on departure. We can still make it back into Belfast if we need to, uh, but it's all looking good. And just to go through this CT in the back here, so we've got a left wing view and what a left wing and right wing view, and one sort of pointing at the cockpit. And what I like to do is close that door so uh, you can separate the cabin from the rest of the things going on. Let's go back to where we should be seated. So we're just past 10,000 foot, so our checks will be landing lights off and subject to the conditions passenger lights off as well and just quick check in the back and see the fasten seatbelt sign is off. We've got further climb up to flight level 200 which we'll do now. Now also we are not normally limited to 250 so we can just increase the speed a bit come up to climb about 265 and as we do that we can also um, tweak the power um, just make sure that we're still Certainly not into the red. As you say, it's a short flight. We don't want to end up 
um, flying is slower than um, we want to, we want to get there quickly. So this is not really, it's not much of a sea crossing, and we're already on the sort of eastern edge, uh, western edge of Scotland. Um, you can see the coast just down there. Uh, so you can see on the route, actually, we're going to be passing over Presswick, EGPK, then Glasgow City. Um, and you don't see it on the map because it's obscured by our approach chart to Dundee, but we will be flying fairly near Edinburgh. You might be able to see that. And then put over Perth Airfield, and that marks the start of our approach. Back to the checklist, I've got a second page here, which is our uh, next checks will be our cruise checks. Now this is the point that you might want to um, request higher because we only went for 200. Key thing here though is, I'm switch to the CDU on, go to the progress page. And the thing you're really looking for is this top uh, of descent distance, that's 48 miles. Um, obviously you're not quite at the top of climb and as we're climbing up that will go down, that distance will go down. Um, if we climb higher... Destination ATIS is 119.33. Thanks. If we go higher than that, um, then our top of descent will occur earlier because we'll have to lose that extra height that we just climbed. That makes sense. Or what's going on here? <laughs> God, that's worrying. I don't like it. This may end up being two parts and this being part one. Um, that's not good. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Um, that's quite unusual for it to freeze like that. Okay. That seems to be okay now. I don't know what's going on there. I normally switch everything else off because it's just good to give as much grunt power to explain as you can. Um, even for this recording, I'm actually um, I'll talk about this outside of the, this video really a bit. It's, um, I'm actually exporting as an HDMI video and then it's um, being mixed on a production switcher just so it's not being processed in the computer. Just give all of the power to the simulator. So yeah, what was I saying? Um, so we've got cruise, it's going up to flight level 200, which is what we've sat on the autopilot. But say we wanted to go slightly higher. Um, so what we do is have a look at the progress page and see we're only 42 miles. If we flow up to um, 20,000 feet, we're only 42 miles from the top of descent. That's the point we need to start our descent, maintain a 1500 foot a minute descent. Um, so we're nearly there. We're couple of thousand feet away so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, let's say we've cleared we've asked we've been offered 2400 so we can put 24 in here that will now continue climbing up to 24 okay it's on the autopilot but I need to also up update it in here because if I don't it thinks the CDU thinks that we're still going to level off at 200 so we need to put 240 in cruise sorry wrong button um, that's in there now if we go to the progress you see top of descent is a lot sooner in fact we might actually struggle getting there it wasn't a good example but we're not forced to descend at the top of descent obviously you know we, we don't anyway we'll wait for ATC clearance for that um, so um, what I've done actually is I've created a spreadsheet and uh, see if that's uh, on here descent calculator you see that there. Um, so you put the speed in knots in the top left, and then the distance um, that you you've got to descend across the top, and then down on the left column, column A, um, is your height to lose, not your actual height. Um, your height to lose. So let's go up. We'll continue up to twenty-four thousand feet, We're still maintaining. You see the um, VSI; it's, it's come down to about thousand feet a minute, because as you get higher. Um, it just struggles more and more to climb. Um, what I normally like to do, by the way, at this point, is 
click it into VS mode. So bring the autopilot panel up. I'm going to hit VS hold. Okay, and what that does, it will hold a thousand foot a minute, wherever this is on at the moment, it's just a bit above. And it means it doesn't drop to silly levels like 300 foot a minute, but it does mean, obviously we can't magic more power, but it does mean it will take some of the speed off. But that's fine. I'd rather it climbed up and got to 24,000 in a timely manner. So just to explain this, so 24,000 feet, let's take the AP panel off, uh, have a look at the legs and um, so when, when we're at the um, top of climb, we're at level at 24,000 feet, you see it's updated in here. Um, say we got a waypoint, say this one here, Grice, okay, it says flight level 7 8, well let's round that off to flight level 8 0. So that is a 16,000 foot descent from 24,000 to 8,000, right? So it's 16,000 foot to lose. So there's 16,000 foot to lose. That is in uh, 7, uh, 36, 41, 70, say 70 miles. So column L. So we'd need to, if we were to descend now, we need to descend at 1371. Key thing is, say we say we're going to give it 2,000 foot a minute descent to be at 8,000 by Grice. Um, I don't have that exactly on here, but you see, we could actually start 50 miles out yeah and that's at 1920 feet a minute or 45 miles out and descent at a slightly higher rate um, so what we will do is we will descend at 50 miles out from Grice if that makes sense I'm making myself clear here so I'll let that get up to our top of climb so progress looks if, if we were to follow the CDU, then it would uh, we'd be looking to descend almost the point we hit it. You know, immediately as it's levelling out, we we'll start the descent. But the nice thing about staying higher with a jet in particular is it gives us a little bit more efficiency because they they perform better at altitude. So just approaching thousand foot to go. Um, So I said about 50 miles out from Grice, so we have a long way, about 15 more miles before that point. But if ATC say, you know, you can stay higher for longer, we'll probably accept that. Uh, just approaching the coast um, and just over Presswick or approaching Presswick at this time. Uh, so the other thing I haven't mentioned is using um, True Earth for Great Britain which is absolutely fantastic if you fly in Great Britain it's a no-brainer it should be law if you have X-plane flying Great Britain to own it it's just fabulous I mean it's so realistic it's ridiculous you always get away with crappy airports and you know um, if you've got this it just makes the experience so much better so here we're just leveling off now 24,000 And obviously, um, we'll let that do its thing. The other thing I've got is display, the navigation display and the attitude display on a toggle as well. I normally like to position those just to the right of the CDU. You see the speed building up here. So this is where the slotation nickname this aircraft has is justified. It's not that quick. We're only 24,000 struggling to get up there. So how far have we got to see? We've, to Grice we've got, we're at 56 miles, so we've got another six miles. Let's just bring the throttles back a bit, so we're not, don't really want to go much below, uh, much above 270 really, so actually just hold the speed there at that point. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll we can put in, um, I'm going to put flight level 80 actually, which I'll be, normally I'll give you an intermediate, but we'll put that in there have that already. Um, I also have a descents page on Stream Deck which is rather good. Um, it's similar to the flights page but gives you descent profiles. As I say just slightly easier to set up a descent as a 1500 foot a minute descent and a 2000 pre-programmed in. Um, just makes it, uh, for this aircraft at least, makes it easier to fly. I've got a bit of a headwind as well actually you see 
uh, four nine, um, 49 knots. And actually, that's the other thing I didn't mention, just back on this page. Um, the speed 360, actually, it's not true. Um, this should be your ground speed, which is, what, say, 340. That's updated now. So at 50 miles, 16,000, we need um, 1,800. Or if we leave it until um, 45 miles, to about the 2,000 foot a minute, to drop 16,000 over 45 miles. So 45 miles until Grice, and then we'll start a 2,000 foot minute descent. <coughs> and that obviously needs updating as you descend and the speed, typically ground speed will lower. It's not always, but you just need to keep that updated. It's not uh, it's not an exact science, but it's um, it helps. Uh, it saves doing mental arithmetic, something I'm not particularly good at. Uh, very easy really, just um, more or less straight line to Perth um, and then start the approach. Uh, just look at the uh, so as we're overhead Perth um, we're going to be level at 2200 or above 2200 that should be on our CDU as well uh, one thing I haven't put in here yet is putting in the departure approach which can do that now so RLS 09 we've agreed um, not going to fly the transition the transition would be if you go over the um, EGPN and then fly an arc but we're coming in from that angle. We we don't need to sort of go over Perth and then back again. If that makes sense. We'll just execute that. Back to the legs, it will show us a discontinuity. So I'm just going to bridge that now. Okay. And back to the top. And we see we need to start sending. So 2,000 foot a minute descent. It's actually set 2,000 feet on the VSI, and it's also changed. Let's get that up the top so you can see it. It's also changed to vertical speed mode as well, and it's put out select as well, uh, altitude select. So just control the engines to make sure we're not over speeding. And we can keep. The, uh, all of those panels open actually the AP panels are not necessary but the other panels will be worth having open just monitor the descent obviously apart from ATC coming in saying okay level off at flight level 140 or whatever they might say the next major point will be um, passing 10,000 um, which case we're doing our checks there are some checks for the descent as well have a look at those so transition altitude review we say 6,000 feet defog fans and windshield bleed so these are the controls here and then windshield bleeds on um, airflow distribution cockpit you can't actually see that there but that's already on cockpit by default um, pressurization well this is where we can start depressurizing if we want we can just let it do its own thing See the cabin pressure is about 4,000 feet and that will actually slowly come down on its own. Um, Anti-ice uh, not required at this point but we will monitor the temperature. It's minus 27 uh, but we're some distance above the cloud base so we should be okay for the moment. Uh, exterior lights as required. Um, one thing I probably didn't switch off, the recognition light, I don't really need that on. Landing lights will come on below 10,000, so that's fine. Approach, have we discussed that? I think so. Let's have a look. Um, approach is here. <clears throat> so we're going to be coming in um, over Perth and then straight onto the approach. Track is 092. They're never exactly the same as the runway, so it's at runway 09, but it's always a few degrees out or sometimes a few degrees out. Straight over... Um, straight over the um, NDB at Dundee and that's a few miles away from our uh, see so see that there's 2.6 miles away from threshold and then the other thing is our deci decision height Let's bring the throttle down a little bit um, so if we need it we can have a look at our approach speed typically about 140 gives us a descent speed of about 740 that's our final approach descent a glide path if we need it we're on full ILS so we don't 
uh, but in case that failed that would allow us to time it and still do it fairly accurately. Um, category B will be our decision height. Um, that will be 290 above ground, 307 above C, add 50 or so, so 360, so we can set that now as well. So if you're not familiar with decision height, um, this is the point which you have to decide whether you're landing or you're doing the missed approach. And missed approach is where you will um, climb again and you'll go back and hold or, or whatever it says you need to do. In fact, they're fairly clearly written here. Um, so this box here continues to climb to 3,000, initial straight ahead to 2,000 and then a left turn towards the NDB at 3. So as soon as we start our descent, we'll bug that um, altitude back to 3,000. That means that we know it's then going to continue climbing, uh, which is what it says to do here. A very, very easy one here. Just straight ahead to 2,000 foot and then a left turn back to the beacon. And again, that's why it's important to have that set. Now, that the other thing you can do at this point, um, we've got this display here, which uh, just little pointers. Um, the yellow one is pointed to NAV1, and the one on the right is NAV or ADF2, and that's currently on NAV. I'm going to click this button and it'll switch to ADF. And that's why, remember I set ADF2 for 394 for Dundee and NAV1 um, to the ILS, because this will display uh, NAV or ADF1 and then NAV and ADF2. So if you're mixing them, one needs to be on one, one needs to be on the other. That makes sense. <laughs> don't know if you understood that I didn't. Um, but it's just the way it works. As I say, this is really old school, this aircraft. How are we doing? So 2,000 foot a minute still. We've got about 6,000 foot to lose. It's going to be three minutes. We are on about five and a half miles a minute. Uh, that's about right. It's not far off. So, four flights also showing other aircraft um, and overlaying that on the map as well. I mean, I could spend hours showing you different things on four flight. This is just one particular flavour of it. Um, for the basic subscription, you get the all of the charts for a particular region. You get the baseline maps, um, various things with that. You also have uh, things like um, composite radar uh, showing you your weather. I'm not, I'm not even sure we've got anything there at the moment to zoom out. I think it does take a time to draw. Oh, hang on, there's a bit, there's a blob. You see the blobs appear in there. It's nothing really to affect us. Switch it off because that um, plays havoc with the performance of the uh, the tablet I'm using. That is. So approaching the ten thousand foot point. So this point we're going to be thinking about other stuff. So I'm going to switch those off for the moment. Um, so we'll probably want to switch our uh, passenger safety lights on and that's enunciated the other thing is I notice we're getting closer to the cloud here so a quick temperature check so we're about minus eight we're probably okay actually on anti-icing but there's a chance of hitting it particularly if we're in higher and the airframe is like still minus 20 you might want to switch some anti-icing on so here's an the engine and body anti-icing can come on now Okay, and that's enunciated up here. We'll just start warming up for our approach. Oh, I just love the scenery. I just can't get over it. It's, it's made such a difference, this um, true earth. So how are we doing? Um, just get the CDO. So we're meant to be at seven thousand at that point. We're a little bit higher. So you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just increase our descent to three thousand foot a minute. Thousand foot to go. I think we're good to go down to about six now. There we go. Six thousand set. Just make sure we're still capturing the altitude. Because the funny thing about this autopilot, it can bust through. You can set the altitudes it can bust through 
Uh, we are below 10,000, so I need to switch those lights on as well. We're over speeding slightly, but often they allow you to go faster than 250. It's just, you know, they'll just say no speed, which means that more or less fly as you wish. It depends on the congested nature of the airspace you're flying into. You see the value of this now, you can really visualize what we're doing um, on, the, on the chart. Um, so 6,000 next. So let's continue down to three. Now, now we're going below the transition altitude. Have a quick check of the weather. Uh, Dundee is a bit out of date, actually. It's at 62 minutes ago, so it's QNH 1023. It's probably not far off, though. So let's put that in now. As soon as you've cleared below a flight level, even if you're not below it, even if you're not below the transition, so we're obviously hitting the transition now, you can set that to local pressure. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to bring the just bring the throttles back slightly, just to start slowing up. Sometimes there's a speed restriction on the approach, um, and I don't see one here. It would normally be written near it. Oh, hang on, here we are. Max two ten for the procedure. Okay, so we do need to come back a bit. It's a good practice as well because you don't want to be doing a sort of sixty degree turn at two fifty knots. You're just going to blow through it. So we're coming down to three thousand, and then. Um, actually let's set 2200 because that's kind of the base for the procedure and I just want it to be level and ready when we are. Now one other thing to point out, we're still in GPS mode and I'm going to leave it on that until it's until it's sort of angled onto the final approach path and then I'm going to switch over to our ILS, uh, switch over to Nav1 on our navigation display. So that's perfect city. There's a little airfield off to the left, can't really see it from here very clearly. I'll tell you what, I'll bring the, um, those little um, navigation and attitude displays up. 1,000 foot to go, so to keep the speed coming off. And the other thing we can do at this point uh, we'll just turn the engine synchronizer off and also on the autopilot we can switch the uh, maybe hit the wrong one your damper can come off at that point as well that's part of the checks and it's just leveling off now that'll bring the speed down don't want to come down too low so we'll make sure we're not below that 200 just feeding a little bit of power to make sure that's the case okay three miles until we got over Perth um, and then turns to the final approach course um, and that's the point that we can actually switch over to the ILS um, and have that do its thing. Now one thing actually to note when we switch over to the ILS it takes the last course from the GPS um, which won't necessarily be correct uh, we want the course to be 092 so I probably need to go in and modify that when that happens. Uh, the other thing to note is this green pointer here that's pointing to the Dundee um, NDB so it gives us some assurance as to where we are. And we're just starting a turn now so I let it complete the turn and then I'm gonna switch to the oops, sorry. when it's completed the turn we'll switch over to the um, nav one mode from GPS because it's on GPS at the moment and you do this you actually do this through a menu and I've set up a little macro for that so just completing the turn now and that's on VOR1 see what I mean about the course it's nothing like what we want it to be so we put um, 92 as the course into the CDU and that's now accurate and now we're locked onto the localizer um, and we can set the approach mode as well on the autopilot and see that's uh, APR approach mode so that, that's arming for a descent <coughs> now what else Approach altimeter set to an altitude set crew briefing we've gone through. Uh, the next will be on our final approach. 
So just monitoring that and you can see the glide slope indicators coming in now and it's locked. You can bring the, start bringing the speed back a little bit as well. There we are. So as soon as you've got that, one stage of flap and gear down. Uh, the other thing to watch is this angle of attack indicates is really useful for landing. This gives us a better idea of um, our safety speed for different manoeuvres. Okay, so we try to keep it in the green and as we're landing into the white and in the yellow, uh, red would be stall and that varies depending on the conditions. Okay, whereas our actual speed, um, you know, we talk about stall speed but there isn't really such a thing there isn't really such a thing it all comes down to angle of attack so you see it's starting to get into the white arc now so I'm gonna I'm gonna just nurse that down so the other thing is now we've started our descent let's set the uh, go around altitude for 3000 in case I don't think there's a problem I can see the runway straight ahead there I don't think you can see it you can see the sort of uh, Vasi lights flashing there uh, not flashing but glistening um, approach speed about 130 or so Wait till about a thousand foot point and then bring the next stage of flap in. I'll just quick check here. Uh, green lights for the gear. Everything else is good. Passengers all belted in. Just approaching thousand foot. Second stage of flap. Three incoming. mile final runway zero nine. Three mile final, so it's about a thousand foot. There we go, thousand foot. So it's two stages, you've got a final stage of flap if you want it. Let's get rid of the CDU. So I so say this is Dundee by Orbix. It's a paid scenery pack. And I was in two minds about it because it's quite a small airfield, but actually it's actually becoming one of my favorite airfields. It's really well detailed and just a nice little airfield for this aircraft. So also we use the speed bug to set our uh, v uh, threshold speed I know put it on about 105 which tends to be so that's the speed we want to be passing the threshold at 500 so let's just take the autopilot off now I have control you see the runway very clearly we have landing clearance as well We're on the glide slope on the localizer so let's speed bleed off a little bit it's not a long airfield. I mean, it's fine for this aircraft, but there's airliners that fly in here. I can imagine that's really challenging, especially if there's no wind. A bit above the glide, so I just lift the nose. This stage of flight, very small changes, because, see, I just lift the nose slightly and it's correcting that glide already. Wind is slightly from the right, very light wind, so nothing to worry too much about. <coughs> Throttle close. No need for the reverse thrust. <coughs> First turn off is coming up. Just use a little bit of brake. There it is. Flaps coming up, transponds to VFR, landing light off, pito heat off, and transponder mode and switch that off. Okay, after landing, thrust reverses are retracted, we didn't use those anyway. Speed brakes are retracted, anti skid, um, actually, it's an item I naughty boy I forgot to put that on but that's fine landing lights off transponders VFR and off anti-ice oh that's one thing again this is why you have to do checklists boys and girls because you do forget stuff like that that'll be probably overheating now <laughs> um, pito static heaters off flaps are up trims set for um, the next flight well more or less right as they are as I say, this is paid scenery by Orbix, really nice. Even the default's nice for Dundee, but um, just adds a little bit 
of detail. I, I tend to buy these when there's um, a sale on, and there was on this occasion. I mean, spent a small fortune on these things, but um, it's um, you know if you fly a lot, you fly as much as I like to. It's um, it does add to the realism quite a bit. So just bring up the, uh, see the chart, that automatically appears, the chart automatically appears on four flight when you go below a certain speed and you've landed. Uh, what we will do, looks like parking space one is available for us. I'll go in there. So the next, um, next set of checks will be our closing down checks. And we can go to fuel cut off. Okay, brakes on. <coughs> Generators off, anti collision and beacon lights can come off. Switch the door open, avionics can come off as well. And we're here, boys and girls. This is Dundee by Orbix. We could do a quick uh, tour. So we've got the main terminal here, a um, couple of static aircraft, uh, some GA as well. There's also a train that comes by, I don't see it here at the moment, but uh, if we're here long enough, the train will come by as well, which is really good. Um, a GA terminal or hangars, and then some, I don't know if it's a museum, but some older aircraft parked out here. Um, and then we've got these playing fields, these football pitches here on the approach, although that's also on, um, I've also seen that. I don't know if it's on stock or whether I got some freeware. Um, and then this side we've got a pub and some uh, objects there. It looks like a hotel or something there. It's a shame about the train. I thought, uh, it, yeah, this is an animation of the train um, that comes by and stops. Presumably there's a station at Dundee as well. So um, that's it. That's the um, Cessna Citation 2 by Canado. Um, really nice aircraft, um, very easy to fly. Um, Dundee by Orbix, and we're using navigation on four flights. Um, so some things to check out. Well, that was my first official recorded flight on this aircraft. I will be doing lots more. Look forward to speaking to you again, and thanks for your company today. Take care for now. Bye bye.